All right, what's up, everyone? Yeah, so welcome to uh, Shooting Game Weekly episode um, 106. Or, yeah, 106 on Astabreed. And uh, this is a uh, modern, uh, modern shoot 'em up released by Edelweiss in uh, 2014, originally on the PC. And um, you know this game's pretty hype. Um, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like similar to Strania, I guess you can compare it to that very, very pretty readily, um, which is another game that uh, Zarok here is gonna be playing. But um, in this episode, uh, we are taking a look at two high-scoring replays. Uh, one of which is the uh, second-place uh, score um, from the world record, which will be perf uh, which will be uh, um, performed by M. Rydrail. And uh, right now we're just taking a look at uh, Zarok's um, lo a little bit lower scoring uh, scoring run um, for the demonstration here in the attract sequence uh, um, for Astabreed hard mode is the replays we'll be looking at. Um, so yeah, uh, we are joined by uh, Zarok. Hey Zarok, welcome. Hello, what's up? And uh, M. Ride Drail, who uh, has has the the, the replay what we'll be, we'll be focusing on uh, a little bit later. So M. Ride Drail, uh, welcome to SCG Weekly. Hello, everyone, and thank you. Yeah, glad to have you. Glad to have you. Um, so, Astabreed, uh, actually, Zarok, before we um, went live, you mentioned that this game was kind of unpopular, but uh, I've actually talked to some kind of, like, random people that aren't, you know, into shmups as much as we are, and they say, like, they tried this game, and they're, like, pretty impressed. Like, it seems like it actually kind of impresses, like, kind of the casual crowd, but uh, saying it, didn't, it still didn't do too well, huh? <laughs> oh, I, I sort of meant that nobody plays it for score. Oh, really? It's okay. one of those games that a lot of non-schmop players play, but like ah, okay. the schmop players don't play it; the other people play it. I see. So, um, yeah, why don't we talk? Uh, why don't you go into a little bit about uh, the release of uh, this game, uh, Astabreed? Uh, for what, what you what you want to say about that, uh, Zarok? All right. Yeah, Edelweiss. I, I haven't played their games that much, but before this, they made a a game called Ether Vapor. Which, did we have a SGT Weekly episode of that game? I don't remember. I don't know, we did not. I'm That's, familiar uh, with Ether Vapor, though. That was a decently popular game. And it has some similarities to Astrobird. You had have a ship with a lot of weapons, sort of like Radiant Silver Gun or a bunch of other games, like Thunder Force. But, yeah. Um, and they worked after releasing that, and I think it was Fairy Bloom Freezer, which is a beat em up game. They made a. They started working on this game, and it took them years and years to finish this. They had a bunch of demos and stuff. Mm -hmm. I remember one of the demos ended in stage three, like it was the first three stages. That's sort of why in the final product the stage three is so crazy, because it used to be the last stage. Right. Yeah, Ether Vapor was was pretty cool. Like um, the graphics were pretty decent. Like obviously, Astabreed is uh, is a step up in presentation. Astabreed has amazing presentation, but. Uh, Ether Vapor, you know, had like the perspective shifts that are kind of popular in some of the more modern shmups, like seeing Ginga Force and Eskatas use those, and some some of the other ones even. Uh, well, I guess Ether Vapor in particular, but those are really cool. Um, and I think this game also has some of those perspective shifts. Even like uh, you can also compare uh, this yeah. game to uh, like uh, Strania too, and uh, that I know that's a game that you like as well, Zarok. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think this game does the perspective change pretty well. Yeah. That's always fun. I always, I always sure. love that aspect. But yeah, the presentation is amazing. Like I, I personally have only um, played this uh, like one time through, but uh, it's definitely worth a playthrough at least. But uh, the scoring is, is really where the game uh, is. We're gonna show that it does have a lot of uh, cool, cool stuff for the scoring and, um, and uh, the mechanics. Yeah. You know, uh, we're gonna get into the mechanics here, but. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually. It seems not overly complicated. Um, which is which is nice. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do, but uh, I, th I think uh, we'll be able to kind of pin this down uh, when we get to talking about sure. it. So, um, yeah, why don't we talk about uh, yeah about uh, what we're seeing on the screen here as far as the HUD or the you know kind of ba very basic stuff, the gameplay or even uh, just the characters you can switch wherever you want to start out. All right, uh, I have a small story I want to tell actually about okay. this game. Oh, sure that's thing. Okay. Yes. So when I first got this, it was like. Did this came out, I think it was the start of 2014, this came out in comic Kit. But mm -hmm. uh, I was enthusiastic about this game. I got the I got the game. I didn't like it at all at first. I, I want to say this because really? I think it's pretty important. But, uh, like, I didn't like it. You could, like, mash buttons, you have a life bar, and, 
Like it, it looks flashy, but it didn't seem fun to play. But then a bit later, I started going for the like uh, one CC and low damage and hard mode and the scoring, and it really opened the game. Really opened up. Like I realized, hey, this is pretty cool. Really, yeah, it is nice. It is nice to have that moment where it's like, oh, the scoring is actually where, actually where this is going to be really fun. <laughs> That's yeah. the case for it's like so many like so many shoot 'em ups like, you can kind of overlook them if you really don't uh, take that extra moment to figure it out. But this yeah, this game has the systems in place and there seems like there's a, a good some good dynamics to it. But uh, yeah, please continue if you're weren't finished there. Okay, uh, I might as well talk about the mechanics a bit. Uh, so in the okay. HUD, yeah, you're the mech, which is it's called X breed. Well, cross breed is the normal mech. Mm -hmm. I don't know what as to breed means, but I'm guessing it means something. Um, uh, in game, in game, yeah, the mecha is called crossbreed by the characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a point. Yeah, you have out. a life bar. Uh, I'll, I'll start talking about the mechanics. There's a fair bit about them. So you have a. It's a sort of a shmup. I mean, it's a cross between a shmup and like a mech game, I think. But you have mm -hmm. a shot like a shmup. You have a lock on shot too. But then you have melee attacks, let's see. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. So you have normal shot, you have two different types of those, and then two different types of lock on, you have narrow and wide. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then there's normal melee, and you have a dashing melee that's invulnerable. And then you have uh, special attacks, depending on how many targets you're locked onto. Uh, one of those specials skips you invincibility and does a circle of damage when you have no lock ons. And if you have locks, then you hit all of them for a lot of damage. And if you have full locks on one enemy, you do uh, massive damage on one target. Mm -hmm. But uh, the scoring mostly is that shooting stuff will raise your multiplier, and uh, killing stuff with melee will lower the multiplier but cash in on the on the attacks. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing that makes that really, uh, I think, interesting is because the multiplier only drops uh, per attack that kills enemies. So if you if you aim your attack really carefully, then you lose less multiplier because it kills a bunch of enemies at once. And that's particularly the uh, dash, the, the dashing attack, right? Yeah, that's yeah, and the, like the special attacks too, like the circular one, I think. Did that, or or do you, I don't remember actually, does the wild DX do that uh, retrial? Wild DX attack is the one that you lock on into a single enemy, all your lock ons. And you just strike the enemy a lot of times, and it does a lot of damage, and that's it. It doesn't give you invincibility. It gives you invincibility while you during the attack, but not after it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you talked about all these different type of shots and uh, kind of uh, attacks and stuff. Um, Zarak, would you want to just quickly commentate uh, what we're seeing on the uh, uh, kind of uh, video right now as far as uh, what kind of attacks you're using, I guess, uh, so that we can actually clarify some stuff oh, uh, here. If, well, you can, if you the, can manage it. <laughs> I'm shooting and meleeing stuff at the same time. Oh yeah, that's one thing you can do in this game. You can simultaneously use the shot attacks and the melee attacks, which makes it sort of... Isn't it kind of like maybe first. like radiant silver gun esque with like how you, isn't it like how you can you can come you combine like the different uh, like special yeah, except, and, sh and shot buttons? Except to... here you can do them at the same time, which is mm -hmm. sort of crazy, but you get used to it. And I'm using the blade dash. That's my favorite move in this game. I use it a lot more than it rile, but you can like dash around the screen and clear everything out. It's pretty cool. Invincible during the dash, and then. Um... You know, there's like another thing where it's like you try to kill a medium-sized enemy with the end of it, and then you can chain yeah, those like dashing chains. attacks. Yeah, that's, that's one cool. of the things I was reading. But yeah, it's like uh, it's pretty busy in gameplay, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, that reminds me that this is the version with the English subtitles. But the problem with that is you cannot read those things when you're playing. It is not. It is not going <laughs> to happen. That's for the viewers. Unless it does you're not easy work mode. well at all. <laughs> I think even in easy mode, you'll have a hard time reading the subtitles. Because <laughs> there's so much to look for. And the cheap shots, especially the yellow ones that are very concentrated, can chip you in an incredibly fast rate. Oh yeah, this boss is, is probably the worst part of my replay. But here you can see how not to do the boss fights if you... <laughs> when you score, because 
in this game, the multiplier gets uh, nullified when you get hit. So even though you have a life bar, getting hit will lower your score by a lot. It's usually like half a million per time you get hit, just because of how the scoring works. But on bosses, you get uh, points by dealing damage to them. So if you get hit and damage them, you lose a bunch of points. And they also have a time bonus, so you want to be fast. And this fight is like it's terrible. I just smashed the... Oh, it reminds me, you have the the normal melee attack. The third is in a chain of attacks, like a beat em up or something. The third attack is unsafe. If you do that while you're getting shot, you'll get hit because you're stuck. So you need to be careful not to mash the button like I did there. Right, and then uh, if people are wondering where the health bar is, it's just that like blue uh, half radial bar beneath the uh, character, right? The the shield bar. Yeah. Yes. So That's you can health. so you can see that for the health and. Uh, and then the, then the multiplier is that bar in the top right there above the shield bonus. That's is that right? Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Also, whenever you're in shield bonus, your heart, your life gauge regenerates. At least the red part in hard mode. If it's normal or easy, it will regenerate until full. That's uh, after you get hit. That that the shield bonus is is uh, is on. Is that is that how that was, or how did it work again? Well, you start with shield bonus that doubles your multiplier, but you lose it once you get hit. Okay. Mm -hmm. We just see you got hits there. It goes back to one, or maybe that was just the end of the enemies there. And if he yeah, gets it's... shield bonus back, his health will start to regenerate. The red part of it, for hard mode at least. Because on easy and normal, you don't have red health. You'll regenerate until full. Like, uh, what? What? How does the red health work? Or is this a hard mode thing where, like, it limits how much health you can regenerate? You can regenerate part of the health that you lost, but not all of it. Oh, okay. So, it's like a... I think it's in fighting games, you have, like, the recoverable health, sort of like that. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. Yeah, and easy and normal don't don't have that. And do you get the, your health, like, refilled at the end of a stage, then, completely? Or is there health, like, shelf pickups? No, you get you get your health refilled at the end of each stage. Okay. Well, at least at the start of every stage. It's better, but it... And on a special moment after this segment that is playing right now. That your mecha will get an upgrade and your health will be refilled, but it will still be considered the same stage. Mm, okay. Oh, the upgrade reminds me that there's a pretty weird way how the shots work in this game. You have these small things that shoot called losses, those blue orbs. If you lock on, you lose those. I mean, you lose control of them. They're, they're shooting lock-ons, but the upgraded mech gets more of those. So you get more shot power, more lock-ons. Mm -hmm. And in that part that we just went past, there's a part where the one of the enemies steals those things from you. Mm -hmm. if, you if you lose all of them, then you lose a ton of score. Like, redraw probably knows. <laughs> Not just everyone. that, but you lose lock-ons. Yeah. And you also lose your EX attacks if you get hit too much. Okay, so we got a like yeah a variety of things to account for. Um, we can probably start to get into uh, M. Rydrail's run here, and uh, once we get into it, I would like to have you guys uh, kind of commentate uh, what's going on in the gameplay, just so we can get a better idea of the uh, game flow. Like, uh, what do you yeah, like? You're constantly sure. uh, like, what's the game flow? You know. You're trying to always, you know, keep the multiplier up with like the regular shot, but then you're cashing it in with the melees. But uh, I like to try to just get that clarified a little bit more uh, when, as we go into this replay. Oh, that, that reminds me of a. Uh, this is special technique in this game where you, the lock ons raise your multiplier a lot, but you can uh, you can so called empty lock things. It's not really empty, but you lock onto things like you keep doing the circle lock on, mm -hmm. even if it does no damage. You just keep doing it because it keeps raising the the thing, so you can. You can lock popcorn enemies and then melee them at the same time, and then you like cheat the system a little bit, but it's hard to do. Yeah, that yeah, it usually requires you to be doing like two different types of attacks at once, typically, and 
And yeah, this stage is pretty anime and animatic, I agree. <laughs> This game does not have auto fire because of the lock ons that revolve around you holding the shot button. Mm -hmm. That's good. That to is clarify. important to note. And I think something that I think it would be good to go before going into my replay is the PS4 version. Okay. There yeah. are different. There are two minor differences between the PC version and the PS4 original version. On stage two, some, e some meteors are unreachable for you on PS4. And on the final boss, you can only wild DX attack it once for the final blow, while on PC you can do it two to three times to make for score. Mm -hmm. A range mode is a completely different game with different con controls. It's like it has auto fire map to the bumpers and triggers blade dash is in on an entirely different button than the blade attack you can hold blade attack for for the combo to perform you can spin the x attack while locked on also if you hold the x attack button and you can spin the conical lock on so locking on multiple enemies faster is easier. Mm -hmm. And also there's the whole enemy change, enemy changes, position changes, more enemies added, and such. And that's only available on the uh, PS4 release, Only correct? on the PS4 version. Yeah. Okay. It's like some incentive, I guess, for people to get the PS4 version. Try Actually, that the score, the world record score for Esther Breed Mecha on hard mode for PS4 version is of 81 million points. Mm -hmm. With oh, 20 million points in both stages 3 and 5, which are normally the stages where you score the most. Mm. So, is there something you're going to ask? Oh, yeah, so like that's 80 million. Um, so, uh, what's uh, what's uh, the your your What's uh, your score again that we're going to be checking out just for uh, comparison? Was it 60? My something like 60? No, no, no. The 80 million is for the PS4 arrange. Oh, for mode. the arrange. Okay, got you, got you. Different. Original, more, original modes world record for PC is 53.4 million as of now. My okay. score is of 50.9 million. Okay. So pretty close. Indeed it is. Okay, well, well maybe uh, now's a good time to switch to replay because it's the last stage on my. Yeah, let's just do that. So. <laughs> That's the last stage. May I pause here? Yeah, so switch, switch over. Yep, let's switch over. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to my replay. It's right here. It's right, right in the beginning. Let me go full screen. And I'm ready to go. Okay, I'm ready as well. So here we go for Emery Jail's uh, run here in Aster Breed. Three, two, one, go. Go. Let me turn down the volume. Yeah, that's better. Oh, uh, neat thing about okay. the stage one and uh, a lot of things is there's a lot of bonus enemy ways in this game. So you want to kill stuff fast, especially here. You get a lot of bonus enemies if you destroy these medium sized things quick. I'm trying to destroy popcorn enemies with the lock-ons and trying to get the Controids, the bigger enemies, with one blade dash because more of them will appear during this segment. Mm -hmm. for, for this part, I'm trying to get the popcorn enemies to build up multiplier, get the spiral with the dash EX attack. If I lock on to the, these four enemies and all their lasers, I'll always get a score of two, 211,000 on that EX attack. Hmm. All right, it's worth noting that uh, using the EX there is the only way to kill those enemies. The way to kill those big background enemies is to lock onto them and do the EX attack like you just did there to get a lot of coins. And uh, yes, yes. how are you able to use the EX attacks again? 
You need there's to have a, a full yellow gauge yellow underneath your mech, okay. which uh, goes up from killing enemies and cancelling bullets. So if you see yellow bullets, you can hit those with your melee attack and get some gauge. And so then, then, the, then the EX attacks typically are uh, cashing in on the multiplayer because is that uh, e are the EX attacks usually melee? Is that is that how it is? Yeah, they're they're all melee. Yeah. They're, okay. One of them is the one that uh, the neutral one gives you invincibility and that hits in a circle. It give, makes you invincible for a while, so it's like a bomb. And the others hit the enemies you're locked onto, like it at the start of the stage. Yeah, I have a few different types of the EX attacks. That's right. You can, for example, cancel, uh, you do an uh, unsafe melee chain, you, you mash the button too much, you can cancel that into EX attack to be invincible, so mm. you like panic bomb. I see. Or you can plan those, it doesn't need to be a panic thing. And when you're going EX, the mech turns golden, right? That's what's going on yeah. there? Okay. Oh yeah, the scoring on the bosses is, uh, you want your multiplier to stay max, and uh, you get points for leveling damage to them. So you want to speed kill them while never getting hit. If you get hit on a boss, you can lose a lot of points. Mm -hmm. And you must keep up with shot as well, because if you don't shoot, the multiplier will rapidly decrease. So I try to get as many lock-ons as possible whenever I can to at least get the multiplier up. Mm -hmm. So then I can dash in and do all sorts of melee stuff. Yeah, nice fight there. It's it's pretty cool how much stuff you can do with the mechanics. That that looked a lot that fight looked a lot different from how most people will do it, for example. But yeah, it's just like you're typically using your normal shot like pretty much all the time to keep that multiplier healthy. And then just kind of uh well using the the lock-ons too that that does it as well and then uh yeah they both do it and then using your dash attack or just your melee attack to cash in so the dash attack isn't so good on bosses because uh, it has a recovery animation so you just uh you just use the me normal melee to deal damage usually but but every attack is useful in some way it's not like you only use one thing all of them are useful sometimes which is pretty cool that is good Chapter 2, which has a particularly interesting part with where one single hit you take can kill your run if you're going for a high score. I'll get to it when we get there. So that's the EX dash attack when you're like doing like the multiple zigzags there? Yes. Okay, yeah, that is pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, that works really well in combination with the locking on to everything, is you're always ready to do the, the EX dash attack. And now the only mini boss in the whole game. Nice. It's important to kill it with maximum multiplier because it behaves like a normal enemy and it gives you 400,000 points on 16 times multiplier. Oh yeah, if you sit in front of the yellow spread shot there, you'll instantly die. Because if you get hit by multiple bullets on the same frame, you just die in this game. It's yeah, that, that, looks, that was pretty nice. It looked like uh, you're like spamming the melee attack on the yellow lasers, and then directly after that, you went into the the dash attack so that you didn't get hit. That was pretty slick. Yeah, you can you can do yeah. It keeps shooting the shots, so you can chain your specials together and cancel those bullets. Smooth. That'll be happening a lot in the game in general later on, but that made the boss part that sort just, of needs that to we just that. went through is the part I was talking about. That if you got hit once there, you get hit once there, it's really hard to recover. Reset. And now for the <laughs> meteors. Oh. They give you a huge score to you, but not because they actually have a high score value, but because there are so many of them. Yeah. Yeah, and again, the dash, like, uh, your multiplier drops only based on the amount of attacks to kill enemies, so he's doing the dash attack on those bunch of asteroids, since only counting as one kill to drop the multiplier. So that's another advanced technique thing. Yeah, this, I love this section, like, there's, so, yeah, so many asteroids and stuff, and, you know, it's like a classic, like, shoot em up stage, essentially, is having, like, the, ma the massive comets and stuff, always awesome. Like, the presentation is so cool. <laughs> and the music is nice, too. Yeah, definitely. The PS4 version seems to look 
even better too. For is it in 4K? It does. <laughs> it does. Yeah, 4K? it really does. Cool. Trust me. All the things. Is it is it 4K supported? Do you know? <laughs> Not is sure. it what? 4K, you know, 4K. like the, the new shit. I think the PC version is. The PC. I think even both. I think I think both haven't covered that in their review. Holy shit, that's pretty awesome. Higher, higher resolutions are supported. Okay, so they what's going on? on right, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go um, ahead. They even went on record telling that a modest PC with an i5 and an R7 as the graphics card ran 30 FPS in this game at 1440p. Wow. So this game is really optimized. It's it's that's, really well optimized. That's pretty good. The graphics are pretty clean too. It's it's nice. I definitely like uh, the style. Well, that boss just got destroyed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did you have anything? Uh, did you have anything to tell about that boss? Yes, there was a part. It was firing red bullets and red homing bullets at the same time. I was trying to get lock on slowly, not all at the same time, so it could so the lock ons could stay in the boss longer. Mm. So when I. When I got to a choke point with no way to escape, I could just press the EX attack button to just slash away and dodge everything as consequence to that. And that really helped. Hmm. Oh, that reminds me that this game has some pretty neat stuff in the UI, like when he just beat that stage, there's splits for all his scores on the stages, so you can see if he's ahead of his PB, or on that stage, you're in total score. It's pretty nice for the player. After playing this, I always wonder why doesn't every shmup do that? Because that's really handy. You don't yeah, need to count yeah. the scores in your head. You just see it when you're playing. That is nice. I mean, they really put that extra effort into like maybe encourage people to try to play for score too. And when you see like all these, uh, when you see all that kind of coming in there, like it makes you wonder. <laughs> yeah. Casually sure. even. I would say. By the way, welcome to the hardest stage in the game. He's not blind. And, <laughs> I, and I, I can guarantee I'm not lying. <laughs> yeah, this stage is the hardest stage for sure. Okay, so what's going it's, on It's here? really hard to do for score too. Like, there's so many. It's so easy to get hit that you lose a million points really easy. And a million points is a lot when you're going for a high score in this game. Yeah, I only have, thrown, only have 13 million so far, so I can see that. In your main source of multiplier, in this stage, are, are things that can hit you, in general. Mm. You're trying to like lock onto all those missiles uh, that Battleship was shooting, and then... Yes. Yeah, it's it's important really important to here to have a multiplier to kill the big battleships. You're like meleeing. You're like meleeing those battleships in the background. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty godlike. They yield, I think it's ninety-six thousand points. I think that's the exact value for a time sixteen kill on them. Someone's asking on the chat by the handle Hensford, Are there games that have similar lock-on mechanics like Asterbreed or or Crimson Clover? Oh, do you yeah. know some? Do you know some Zarok? Yeah, so Kyogre and Tai, like Solonas just said, and then there's the Ray series, which is Ray Force, Ray Storm, Ray Crisis, and I think uh, Alternate Second. Alternate Second actually is very similar to this game. Now that I remembered it, mm -hmm. it's another mech mech shooter thing. Yeah, these a lot yellow of shots lock on for sure. Important thing, these yellow shots can chip your way to death really quickly. Many runs of mine were killed because I was dropped down from 7.5k 7 to zero health by one barrage of yellow shots. Those so are really dangerous and the visuals don't help either. Yeah, these enemies are bullshit here, the, the three-way red things. Mm -hmm. those, you, you might think that those the whole uh, sprite is in the hitbox, but it is like everywhere where there's red is a hitbox. Mm -hmm. So those things just show up and box shot you in the face. Unless you're on the right side of the screen, which doesn't really make sense because you can't shoot behind or melee behind. 
This following plot is really important for score because there's an enemy called Trochoid. It yields 320,000 points if killed with time 16 multiplier. And there's two of them. But there are some popcorn enemies right before it. So I'll try to dodge everything. And try for safe strats to kill them with the blade. Yeah, and you just use the neutral EX to be invulnerable. That's another nice strategy to have here. You see, yeah, you see, remember you stay invulnerable for five seconds with the neutral EX. Yeah, it's when uh, when the mech has this yellow circle around it, you see like this shiny sphere around it, oh. and you're, uh, you can't be hit. It's important to fire at these mines so they return to you suicide yellow bullets. They fill your EX gauge. Gotcha. If you destroy... If you destroy bullets, yellow bullets with the blade, you get EX gauge. Yeah, this this is part's also really important. tricky. Nice yes, because you need to dodge everything and keep blading to not get hit by the yellow shots to get a high multiplier on the cycloids, which is also an enemy that yields 320,000 points if killed with time 16 multiplier. It's pretty amusing how uh, sometimes when you're just like holding the shot and then uh, doing the melee, how you, can, you kind of like float around slowly dodging things. <laughs> That's pretty amusing. Yeah, it's because the last attack has this big recovery period. You're like stuck in this, like it's, you just become sluggish if you do the final attack combo. Uh -huh. So uh, if you want to avoid that, you can double tap the melee button. I think the same mechanic is in Sin and Punishment too, actually, which has nothing to do with this, but it has the same thing where if you do three attacks, you're sort of screwed. There was so a you can double EX tap. there. You can do double taps to uh, keep moving like a normal shmup while you melee. The first part we I just went through is really hard to build up multiplier because the closest thing we got to pop, we get to popcorn enemies is Controids, which have 800 health. And they still yield just a little bit of multiplier. So I can find a way to score well in that part. For this boss, this is the RNG boss. Her patterns are random. There's even an achievement to see all of her patterns. Oh wow, cool. She's not too bad though. You can kill her pretty quick. About 10 seconds ago we saw the um, uh, the uh, wild EX that uh, is for one enemy there. That was but I think that was one that was enemy cool. all lock ons. Yeah, I think someone said in chat they really like that too. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. You need to aim your lock on carefully too to get that because you don't want any extra enemies to get locked or you lose the way for, weaker yeah. normal one. That looked like a nice thankfully finish. Thankfully for this, thankfully for this final part, I got the part I am most comfortable with dodging. Okay, nice for the last pattern. And this boss flinches once it takes a little bit of damage. And while it's flinched, you'll deal more damage to it and consequently get more points. Okay, cool. So it like gets like staggered, like FF13 style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty much that. <laughs> Comparing FF13 to shmups, lol. <laughs> this is the part I take a page from Zarok. Shoot the enemies, play the rest. That seems I to be a common th nothing. theme in the game. <laughs> oh wait, oh, use the EX, I see. I use the EX attack at nothing, just for the invincibility. You have an there. easier time with the dealing with these enemies. I, I always thought this part is pretty cool, this coming up. You can do some neat stuff with it's the dash attack here, dodge points. everything. Yeah, it seems like e like each way, each kind of uh, like in the game, like there's like waves of enemies, and then it's like a wave ends, and the next wave comes. Like that's that has to do with like kind I of uh, always regret <laughs> speed killing, right? <laughs> What happened? This part. I hate this part. Okay. Oh, I, oh, that's my favorite it part. You can't dodge that. <laughs> you can. You just blade yes, dash back and forth like an idiot. And you dodge everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you mean this part? No, the... 
the part with the Sagittarius firing a lot of missiles and homing yeah. lasers. In my in my uh, run, I managed to dodge that somehow. It looked weird. <laughs> I always try to get behind them and destroy them, just for safety. Yeah, it, you, it, it was doing well at the start there, but then it got harder. It has like the names of the uh, enemies there. I'm. I'm trying to milk for score on those yellow lasers so I can spin the X attack for invincibility during that part. So I can get a high score on Nobilis, which is also an enemy that yields 320,000 points if killed with time 16 multiplier. Mm. Well, that's a really clever route there, nice. Because usually you don't leave enemies around like that. And during this following part, I just mash away. Yeah, here it's just the game is telling you to mash all the buttons, and it gives you a lot of points. They're just coming in here, Works. flying right at you. A little rush. It's actually trickier on PS4. Uh, this part is tricky. There's these two portals, and if you shoot the green portal, the red one shoots this undodgeable stream of bullets. You need to blade dash through it or uh, not shoot the green portal. But I think he's locking onto it, which makes it really hard. You can milk the yellow that. bar on that too. You can milk the yellow bar. Get some yellow bullet cancels with the blade. But right in this part, you can do the. You can chain the the dash melee. If you kill one of those medium sized enemies, you can chain the attack together, and you can pass through other bullets. Like uh, keep. Moving back and forth with the plate dash. I always wonder if that's the intended way to do that or not, because the pattern is starting. And like I have an I have an interesting way of tackling this boss. I'm pretty methodical when it comes to it. I destroy the turrets, lock on, wall the X attack, blade combo, enough time to respawn. Rinse and repeat until the <laughs> shield is down. It's an interesting way to milk points because the time bonus don't don't matter as doesn't matter as much in this boss. Mm -hmm. I think this is the boss that time bonus matters the least because you can get a lot of of bonus on the boss itself. Outside of time. Yeah, I think there's an achievement for destroying the turrets too, right? So the game tells you, hey, you're gonna go close to it on this boss. Yes, yes. 30, th 30 times, I think that's the, the exact number. Is that the EX attack whenever that uh, big lock on is happening on the core there? Or is that just a regular full lock on? It's full lock on on the shield. That's what I'm trying to accomplish. But this part is the part where I try to get the most out of, of points because I can do a lot of damage to the core, to the core now. Oh, yeah, and you got hit. That sucks. I got hit. Because again, dealing damage to bosses gives you points. So if you lose your multiplier, you lose like half a million really easy every time. At least he's get the. At least he's still cash in though when you're dealing damage. That's nice. Compromise. Yeah, but. But it's sort of like you either have to wait or you lose the time bonus. I guess here, it is, I guess on this boss, you could just wait for the multiplier to come back because you're not getting a time bonus anyway. But no. But hmm. but 1.9 million just for boss score is really good in this in this boss. It's possible to get a little higher, but still really good. I think 8 million in this stage is barely reachable. I haven't reached it I haven't reached it myself, but I think it's doable. And now oh, for no, the story that... happening. So and you uh, for... I think the character yep. what's it called? Esto? No, it's Esto is the red girl. And, yes. Uh, yeah, Fio is the blue girl. Yeah, you lose control of, like, Fio gets messed up, so you lose control of your lock-ons and stuff here. Story... It reflects on gameplay. Oh, 
story related gameplay hype. <laughs> yeah. Actually, this part is really hard because to dodge all the attacks uh, in the following part. And if you get hit, you lose your uh, lock on things. It's sort of a pain in the ass. But you can use the EX attack to get be safe. Use it as a panic bomb. EX attack and blade dash are your best friends during the part where you can lose your lock ons. I'm trying to get a million or so during that part. Lock on, melee, lock on, melee. I got Pretty hit much, by yeah. that. But I could have escaped that with the Spinny X attack and you got a pretty high multiplier on the Nobilis. Oh yeah, if you shoot those bomb things with a normal shot, you gain uh, EX gauge too, so you're not always using the... Um, you're not always canceling bullets, you can also shoot the bombs. Some enemies shoot those bombs everywhere and you can recharge your gauge instantly from those. Mm -hmm. I'm avoiding lock-ons because they'll slow you down, and thus making the, the red orbs undodgeable. I got hit by some still. I don't remember if I pulled it off in this replay, but there's a pretty interesting Nobelis skill coming right now after these popcorn enemies. You make it sound so right simple. Now, Oh shit. No, I got hit once. But I still managed to build a dec uh, decent multiplier. But most Damn. of the score in this stage comes from later. Uh, those miss these enemies, you're, you're pretty much designed to do the blade dash here to all those missiles and bullets mm -hmm. to uh, even kill them. So it's another way of the game is telling you, hey, you have this mechanic, you should yeah. use it. Um, <laughs> Someone says on chat, Aquas, if you read this, watching you play has made me see <laughs> Batrider in a different light and in, in rising in general. <laughs> That's good to hear, good to hear. <laughs> rising games are pretty amazing. Yago is insane. <laughs> Alright, there's that really long cutscene here. Yes. I guess. This cutscene cool. is pretty long, and I don't skip it because of my hands. I have a problem on my hands that I can't sustain a lot of play in a game where I have to push buttons a lot. So that's why I don't skip the story segment. Yeah, it's good to take a break if you get one, right? Anime! <laughs> yeah, there's Anime. A lot, there's a lot of plot here. Yeah, how so I felt... Can we cover the story? Well, you, you guys can go ahead. But like how I felt when I first played this is like the Elda cut the story was happening and it was like it was reminding me of the first time I watched Evangelion. I had no idea what happened. <laughs> but what, what, yeah, what's going? I mean, can you summarize the story a little bit? I guess. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so I think it's been really long since I looked at the story, but it's like uh, oh damn. So there's these two girls who are uh, they're AI actually. This one guy made them and then. They got captured by the the aliens, which are a computer race. They are named but then they got Fighting. split up, so the red girl is on the enemy side, and then you're the Theo. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the aliens are like trying to turn everything into computers or something, and they need the human... They need to cross the humans with the computers, and then something bad happens or something like that. Oh, yeah. Grotto, which is Roy's mentor, Roy's the player character, he picks up Theo in his mech, in her mech, to go to Earth, but he doesn't make it. Theo makes it, and it gets, and she gets Roy to cope with her on the on the fight. Esto stays behind, and she's brainwashed by the Phylun, which is the enemy. As for now, both girls are con 
are being brainwashed. But Roy manages to snap both of them out of it. <laughs> By anime logic. That's the best way I can put it, honestly. We may not have wished for these bodies. They didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're actually sisters. And they're really powerful at it because as Luke assistant, they can manifest as anything they want. Including firepower. So it's like that is almost like even Gellion like like uh syncing with the uh mechs and stuff. They I mean, can alter all reality kind of as they see fit. <laughs> and with that much power comes great responsibilities come along with them. And great dangers as well. <laughs> this narration. Shout out to Spider Man. Spider Ben? <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, Spider-Man. Who where? <laughs> okay, I still don't get what Astabrid is. Like, why does it happen? Maybe I, I and, misunderstood the plot. And by having Esto in your side, your mech upgrades to this. Which is the distant cousin of Xenogears. Oh, shit. There's a lot of spoilers and such. <laughs> That's for sure. That's how I... That's how, that's how close friend refers to. He always remembers of, of Zeno years whenever he looks at the Acer breed, <laughs> the Mecha. Show us the Zeno gears. <laughs> it's music hype. PS4 gets a different music for this part, right. which is my favorite music in the game. Yeah, or they change it. It's awesome. In this part, you just go crazy with the mech. Like, you get a lot of points here. Play dash, play dash. A lot of power, fire powered. Get a lot of I try to get a time 16 on this cycloid because I can lock onto the popcorn enemies. Nice. Oh yeah, the neutral EX attack changes when you're an Astrobrid. It damages the whole screen instead of being small. Mm -hmm. I think you use it in a couple parts. There is a really odd timing to my button presses in this part. It would be funny if this game had in, if the replay had input. But I tried to destroy the popcorn enemies with shots while trying to get some lock-ons. But I also try to get as many spin EX attacks as possible, get the most out of the points. But the dev but the problem on using spin EX attacks is that they decrease your multiplier by eight instead of four for the other EX attacks. Mm. This part is just regular shooting popcorn enemies. And getting X attacks on the bigger ones. That's your bread and butter in this game right here. But, but there's a Nobilis coming right now, which I will try to get the maximum bonus, but I get the X attack too early. But I still get a lot of points from it. This part is cool because you're you're always doing this, the raising the multiplier and cashing in at the same time here, it just username M you. Username MTBD500 is asking if STG Weekly is on Patreon. Uh, no, we're not, but I mean, uh, if people want to support us that way, just let, let, let us know, um, and uh, I'll consider maybe doing something like that. I haven't really thought about it too much, so. For this boss, milking is really important because there's a ton of pots you can destroy. Yeah, and you really and you just... don't want to get hit too because then you lose the points from those parts. So that you, if you're playing for score, you want to practice this boss a fair bit because it's harder hit than him now, makes it look. I, 
I think I'll soon get hit and I'll lose a bit for it. But I'll manage to recover somehow. So like you... now, I'll get hit. Mm -hmm. But our, I already have 3,800,000 3, points for this boss. Oh yeah, it has like a, like a mini score up there for uh, like the checkpoint or something, or the stage. It is right on the left to your total score. There's your boss score. Oh, okay, cool. This is kind of a memorable moment to me of the, when I was playing. In this part, these spinning lasers, you can dodge them completely if you just keep spamming blade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never knew that. That's oh, really wow. weird. Okay. Huh. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. If you don't know that, you can try to blade dash through it, but if you, <laughs> you might as well just mash. Also, time bonus is completely irrelevant to this boss as well because there's so much you can milk off it. But it's always good if you can if you can milk a lot and then quick and then kill fast. But then you may just destroying the parts, not actually milking the boss. Like you yeah. just want to destroy everything. Yeah. So it's not like you're you're being waiting around. And this is the last stage of the game. There's and a queen, boss, it's just a nickname. Go ahead. The final boss is named <laughs> Queen System. It, I think it's four, 480,000 health. Damn. It's definitely the hardest boss in this game, is the Queen System. If, if people are trying to one credit clear this game, they're probably gonna fail their first runs on that boss, you need to practice it a lot. It's like the computer core of the enemy aliens, so in the plot they're trying to mess mess it up so that the the computers lose control. So this, I, I never discovered this Yo, earlier before sick. when I was trying this game, but this is an enemy you can kill, and you can kill for 320,000 points at max multiplier as well. So it's important to get a lot of kills on these. Yeah, nice. If, yes, if you're slow there, you don't you don't get a lot of them. Like the, more and more of them spawn as as you kill them. Mm -hmm. Banana Medic asked if I can blade through the lasers. Yes, I can because there's invo on active frames. Yeah, blade dash is invincible. It's like a teleport. But it has a pretty. Pretty long recovery. You can use the EX to cancel your cover. That's uh, that's sort of what I like about this game. You, you can every you can chain all the attacks together, and if something unsafe, you can do the EX as a finisher. So it's it's not like something has a big recovery it doesn't mean you can can't use it in a route. You can always get around that somehow. This boss, the patterns for it. I'll try to lock on and get one wild DX attack. Maybe two. Whoa. If. Yes. Oh, you man. can cancel the all bullets. And I'm trying to get as many spin EX attacks. I actually got hit there. Yeah, that was like, that was like five EX come... attacks in a row. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, this boss looks cool when you, you do it right. <laughs> You're chaining EX attacks all the time. But I can recover fairly quickly. Yeah, I always get hit here too. It's nice. really hard. That kind pattern is kind maybe of the hardest to Kind of floating in between the red lasers there. Yeah. As for this part. You have yellow bullets you can cancel for your X attack. You have lasers and you have. And you have power shots in a cross pattern. You can play that to avoid most, most of it. One thing I failed to do on my earlier runs of this game was pay attention to the lasers. I think if you deal damage early enough, you, you can skip this whole pattern. You don't need to deal with that. And you now, the maximum damage for the before. final pattern, where I just go for safety strats. But there's an interesting strategy Zarok told me after seeing my replay. And I'd like him to elaborate on it. Right, so an uh, easier way to do this is just to double tap the melee attack, because if you do three attacks here, uh, it's really easy to die. If you do three attacks, you sh 
the red shots will hit you, no, no question. But just uh, blade those bullets to get gauge, and then just keep chaining the EX and the melee attack. And this is pretty much the finish him part. On the PS4 yeah. version, you can only get one EX attack on this part. Mm. Here you can get two, maybe even three. Finish him. <laughs> this is the only cutscene I skip because I wanted to see the score. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I want to see my score. Yeah, no, <laughs> nobody breaks it before. They, I mean, skip the cutscene before this part, though. Oh, you skipped it right away, but yeah. Oh, that, there you go. But yeah, you got to see the thing break. It's important. Hey, one of your friends was uh, playing Dark Souls uh, 2, I think. Three. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> because that's relevant. It's too bad nobody and sent you a message while you're playing. I think I was chatting with with Kaiser and this Pache, I think it was him. I th I think I tried to talk to you too, Zarok. I don't <laughs> remember if I had you on the friend list. Back when, when you I were talking this. during the run to people, <laughs> I I hard. talked during the ending. Ah, nice. <laughs> I oh, are you showing the whole ending? Because that's a pretty yeah pretty well, silly yeah. thing that happened here. Ending. I mean, I don't know. Well, only if you guys wish to see more stuff to be explained. Well, if you have a, yeah, I mean, if I, we have a, a yeah, stuff to wrap not. up on, uh, I you have can feel free. I have something to point out. Right before the last phase of that boss, I got a full screen lock on, which is the actually the focus lock on, but your focus on the front on, but it's a frontal lock focus, so you get the full screen focus. That is tricky to do because you can only do it specific parts. But you guess the fat but, but you guess the fast lock on into the whole screen. And that's the only way to do it. You can do it in stage this two, right before the boss. You can do it in this boss as well, the final boss. And I think there are some important parts, some important other parts you can do it as well, which I can't recall now. And, yeah, something about time bonus I need to clarify as well. Time bonus is the time it's, the time left on the top of the screen multiplied by 5,000 for the stages 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and multiplied by 10,000 10, on stage 6. Hence why time bonus is important on the final boss. Okay, cool. That's to important know. to point out as well. For for the for the scoring on this game. But you like discovered that I'm assuming because the uh, end of the stage bonus uh, indicated that. Or how, how did you find did the, out? The math. Oh, okay. Damn. Cool. The numbers. I did the math. Yeah. I, He's a man of the numbers. Also, PS4 gets a completely different ending. That you visit Grato, which is the mentor of Roy. You visit his grave with the sisters. In a range mode only. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a nice touch, I didn't know. And, as opposed to the... To the PC version, there's actually a credit roll after you beat the game. There's like the voice actors for everyone, the composers. I can't to this day I can't believe these composers didn't didn't get more work because one thing I really like about this game is the music. Yeah, I mean the presentation oh, is amazing. Yes, I, mean, I was talking to you. Check out this on the screen, it's important. I was talking to you indeed. <laughs> during the ending. That's why I didn't skip it as well. 
<laughs> but soon after this is over, there's also an important part where everything will be shown to you. So it's encouraging to play this to the, ver to the very end. And in the meanwhile, I'm clarifying some stuff up. <laughs> so... Yeah. I don't think there's anything else I need to clarify except for what's following after this cutscene. Where I'll wish... I'll, I'll request a pause on the replay on... Okay. On the... On the final score. Okay, sure. The tension graphs and everything. Yeah, uh, yeah, those would those I think need some explanation. So I'll count down the polls in three, two, one. Now. Okay. Yeah, we're paused. So. Okay. Here, in the final results screen, you get the amount of time you took to play the game, your score. Your nickname, which you input in the beginning, when you first start off the game, you do it both on the Steam version and on the non-Steam version. You get your country as well. You get the, the percentage of enemies destroyed and the amount of them. And how many enemies you killed. Or rather... Yeah. With the... Uh, the multiplier. The tension graph is um, where the multiplier was during the stages. Or the ors of the score peaks. Also, there's the total right. damage you took throughout the whole run. There's even an achievement for that. For every difficulty, you can get an achievement for having less than 50,000 damage taken. Yeah, you got really low damage here. That's nice. It's not easy to, like, I think when people first play, they they should go for the less than fifty thousand damage on hard mode. That's like a one CC, I'd say, because you can you can get through hard mode, take a lot of damage, and it feels like you messed up. But if you don't take that much damage and get that, then it's pretty good. And the tension graphs, which which show to you how how was your multiplier in in each stage. Okay. And for cool. the poten for the potential in each stage, I believe it's possible to get like five million on stage one. It's really hard to do it though. I I saw someone do four point nine. It's possible to get a fair bit above seven million on stage two. Yeah, nice. It's also, it's also oh. again it's nice the game keeps track of your uh, your best scores in each stage. You don't there's not only the graphs. I never looked at the graphs much, but it saves your uh, scores for each stage. So you're like, oh wow, my best uh, best stage three is huge. So I should work on that stage and uh, get a lot of more points for the full run. And for stage three, the score potential I guess it's around. 12 million around because I've never seen someone get like 12.1 million the max I've seen is 12 million for chapter 4 8 million is achievable for, for chapter 5 you can get up to 15 million in, in the Nico replay the Hishamo even gets 15 million on stage 5 in for in for chapter six, around seven point something million. If you get some some of those nobilis and marquios, which are worth a lot of points with high multiplier. And this screen also tells you when you got when you got the the score. And if you check the leaderboards, the the left part of this screen will be shown there. Like the name, the location, the tension graphs, the, the individual scores for stage, the time, but not the, the amount of enemies destroyed or the damage. So, 
I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover when it comes to gameplay and scoring. Great. If he, if, 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 if it's desired, I could tell about the unlocks of the, of this game. You don't unlock hard mode from the start of the game. You need to complete normal mode. It doesn't matter if it's 1cc or not. And you can also unlock Aster Breed, the mecha. You use from stage 5 onwards, you can use it from the start. There's also a category for that. And yeah, it's weird. It's not a big difference, but Aster Breed has higher potential, right? Like by a little bit, because it, it can do the full screen EX attack and uh, more lock ons and all that. Stage 4 sees a lot of Aster Breed the mecha, a lot of different strategies for better scoring using the spin EX attack that covers almost the whole screen, and also the unlocks of this game, outside of hard mode in the new mecha, if by beating easy mode, I think you unlock backgrounds, the animated backgrounds, I don't remember if the mecha models is on ease, is on hard, is on normal mode. I guess it's on normal mode. You unlock documents, artwork on normal mode as well. You also unlock effects, special effects. That's a hard mode unlock. And sound test. Also a hard mode unlock. Yeah, there's a lot of nice extras in this game and even a lot more in the PS4 version too, I guess. Like, it's even better. All of that is seen in the gallery. Neato. So? Yeah, a lot of content. It's good stuff. Yep. And, and I also noticed... Also a, uh, oh, go ahead. There's also a screen that shows all of your playtime stats, like for how long you've been playing, how much game clears you have, your total score, your total score across all runs, how many enemies you destroyed by firing? How many enemies you destroyed by you destroyed on melee attacks, EX attacks? How much damage you took in your entire time with the game? Some pretty neat features as well. That's a lot of nice yeah. little details to have. I mean, I think I, I feel like um, a lot of these modern shmups should have uh, stuff like that now. You know, maybe uh, they're trying to set an example here, with trying to give like all like all the stats and. Uh, really help you understand what's going on. I mean, we're going to get, uh, bet, I mean, a somewhat related note, uh, bet the new release of uh, Battle Grega that's coming out on PS4 has, like, a whole, like, uh, HUD with all, like, these kind of stats and things to help you out, and I really like, I really like this uh, trend to, going to you know, going towards that for these modern shmups, because um, it really helps uh, people understand, I think, just to know wh what's going on in the background uh, more apparently. So, if there's something good stuff, good I... stuff from Metal Eyes for sure. If yeah, I wonder what they're like... doing next because they have really. Yeah, yeah. They're working on another Fairy Bloom Freezer game, but you're going back I think and they're forth. They're helping <laughs> other Dojin developers too. Like it's the same with Rebrand. You know, when there's those big Comic Head events, they're they're one of the guys who help others. If I remember right, they uh, they help make the trailers and all that, which cool. is really nice. This game's super impressive, and uh, watching it played for score, um, it really looks like a lot of fun. Like, really glad we could do this episode because it, it seems like uh, it, there's definitely a lot of room for some players to try playing this for score. Uh, I saw on the leaderboard there that uh, your run was like uh, Zarok was like 12 or something, 15 million higher than uh, the average of like the the last like six or seven runs on the leaderboard. So it seems like there's a lot of room for some new players to come in and get some decent scores and get in the leaderboard. Also not yeah, many sure. people also not many people played hard mode because there's around four thousand scores there and the leaderboard supports ten thousand. Okay. Oh yeah, we didn't I, I meant to ask like uh, so hard mode um like uh, that you can get higher scores in that how, how is how is that uh, different from normal mode exactly? You get more enemies your health doesn't refill completely in shield bonus. Uh -huh. You get red health akin to some fighting games, which you refill well in shield bonus, but you can't refill all of your health. It seems like it's like damage too. It's yeah. just it's just harder because of that. It, 
it, when you're starting out, it's very, it's not that easy to one CC hard mode. It might look easy here, but mm. you can take a bunch of hits from some boss and just blow up. And those power shots, especially the ones in the the final boss, which are the most noticeable one, do like two thousand damage, I think, or three thousand, something between that, and you have ten thousand health. Each cheap shot you you take from purple and yellow shots are like 250 damage to you. But after you are hit by a power shot, you flinch. That doesn't happen if you get hit by a yellow or a purple shot. Which means yellow and purple shots, when there are a lot of them, they can kill you faster. Yeah. Yeah, you, there's no, uh, if you, uh, I think I already said this too, but in this game, there's the weird quirk. You can get hit by multiple bullets on the same frame and you'll just take all the damage. Okay. So in, there's a part in stage three where it's these, the, there are these cannons from the background that shoot and it's really easy to instantly die to those. I see, I see. I wonder why they, I wonder why they kept that in because it, it, it can happen. Hmm. This is, it, this is why we both considered stage three to be the hardest because there are many cheap shots there, and there are background yellow power shots that split into multiple yellow shots. If if one of those hits you right in the center of your hitbox, it's probably seven. It's probably seventy five hundred damage. It's like three fourths of your health. Because I remember very well going from three. Three fourths of my health to zero. Yeah. In yeah. one run. Oh yeah, Rudral, do you have that. any? Uh, are, are you gonna keep playing this game? Like, what do you think after this run? What did you think? I will, but not now because there are many stuff I need to finish, and I also need to get a controller for myself because I'm using a controller I borrowed from a friend. Sick. So when it's a, it's one, when I have a stable working controller that is actually mine, I'll go back to playing this game and I'll try to get the the world record for this game. Nice. Because I still like playing this game. Nice. It looks like my, yeah, a lot of fun, it looks like a lot of fun to play for score. It's not too stressful either, too. but if you mess up, your score messed up. But but like, uh, it's not it's not hard to clear. It's one of those games you should play for scores. Like uh, sort yeah. of like King of Force. King of Force, you just like blow up everywhere, you get all the points. Yeah. <laughs> and to anyone who's interested on the story, if you beat the game and unlock the documents, you can read all of it. Oh, good. You can read. Read about the characters, about the villains. There are plenty to check out in the world of Fast Breed, in the game itself. Seems like Edelweiss. I mean, they're 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 an indie developer, but this game is definitely has a commercial, um, kind of like almost AAA feel to it. Like it's really impressive. Yeah, it's crazy. Especially the PS4 version. I can't wait to try that sometime. I'll definitely. When I get a PS4, I'll, I'll try this game again. That's for sure. That's amazing. Yeah, I, might, I might have to tell my friend uh, who has a PS4 to uh, check this game out and just go, to go over to this place and see. <laughs> I have I have tried the PS4 version and I, and I can testify the greatness, the visual greatness. Oh man! That the game has. Visual greatness. It, <laughs> yes, that's the best way I can put it. <laughs> Even better looking. <laughs> When's uh, Edelweiss making the next Darius game? We Damn. need to see. We need to see giant fi like the G Darius giant fish like in Astabri. Yeah, I mean this game's always boring. on sale too. Like everyone's got to pick it up. Like if if it's on sale, you got to pick it up. I mean everyone should pick this up. Like it, it is amazing, and it's like no one else. I mean hardly anyone is doing like kind of these large eff these large efforts uh, in the in the modern shooting game market. I mean, it came out 2014. I mean, you got to show your support and pick it up. So everyone, please uh, try it out. Yeah, they seem to do oh. pretty well, too. A lot of people bought it and got good reviews. So it's nice that they succeeded in getting uh, new people into shmups. Yeah, that is that Even is though great. this is sort of a very untraditional shmup you're, you're it's using. It's very, like, yeah, very action-packed type of uh, gameplay. 
I would say. However, I have something to point out, which is a problem I had with this game. It's important that you skip the prologue at first to disable to disable 5.1 audio because it's glitchy. Oh, okay. And it can crash the game. Mm. So if you set it to 2.0, 2 the game will run fine. You can play the prologue again just fine. Yo, damn, that surround sound, though. <laughs> and also, this game is very well optimized. Yeah, I think it we already can... said that, but I, I agree, because uh, I have this crappy laptop. Well, it's from 2013. It's media mediocre laptop, but I could record it like uh, in lossless quality with the X story and a crap laptop. So it's definitely optimized, I think. Yeah, it's nice. It's so... impressive because usually you don't see Dojin games that look this good, and you definitely don't see them that they run super well anymore. Yeah, I love the graphical style. It's not uh, too like saturated by particle effects, but it, well, I mean, it is a little bit at times, but like kind of the effects and stuff. But it, it does have that clean look to it, kind of like Ginga Force. I, I would say it kind of look, kind of, look, kind of looks like Ginga Force a little bit. Probably some more effects in that game though. It looks very clean without looking too chaotic. Which yeah, is a nice yeah. touch. And by that, I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. Yeah, thanks very much for uh, yeah coming on and talking about this. This is a, this is awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, great run by yeah, the way. Yeah, sick run. But both of you, yeah, pretty good runs. Well, we didn't see all of Xyrox, but we actually and then end up showing a good portion of it just while we're talking here too. So, good stuff. I thank you for the opportunity given to me for participating on this. I'm yeah, grateful to that. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you everyone who watched this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely this yeah, this game is freaking awesome. So, all right, that's going to wrap it up then for Shooting Game Weekly episode 106 on Asta Breed. This game uh, like I say it's uh, it's on sale quite often and for quite cheap, usually less than $10. If you don't have it on sale, pick it up anyway. Um, because you want to see more games like this, right? I mean, come on. Full full anime storyline, the 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 full anime cutscenes, voice acting, uh, epic backgrounds, music, gameplay. It's got it all, man. It's got it all. <laughs> anime. <laughs> okay, with uh, oh, yeah, but animatic poster scores, damn it. <laughs> and yeah, the call, but for, yeah, before we go, we have to call up an animatic, of course. <laughs> yeah, and it's anything, important. also anything that's needed to ask, that anyone wants to ask, you can find me on the Shmups forum. Not not that often, but on Steam, it's easier to find me. I'm also on the IRC and Discord of the Shmups community. You can mm -hmm. also find me there. And any sure. questions related to Asterbreed, I can enter. I'll yeah, drop definitely. a link to my Steam profile on Twitch chat right now, so they can add, so they can add me. Cool. Um, oh, I had something. I get... Had something else I was gonna say, but I forgot now. Let's see. Got the link right. Nice. No, oh, yeah, thanks didn't. for having me again on uh, STT Weekly. Oh, of course. It's always it's nice good. to see good. you. Yep. Actually, didn't. Hold on. Let me just get this link, my profile, and post it on Twitch chat. Oh, yeah. I remember so what I, I was going to I remember what I was oh, going to say. Um, also, in the uh, YouTube uh, description for this episode, once it goes up, I will have a link to the uh, Nico video playlist for the world record if anyone's curious about that as well. Always, uh, uh, also, yeah, always remember, folks, uh, yeah, take a look at the uh, YouTube descriptions. Um, we have actually a form uh, for people who uh, are experts at uh, various games who potentially want to come onto the show. Uh, we have a link to that form in the um, YouTube description, so please check that out if you are uh, interested in coming on the show and talking about a game, uh, whatever it may be, and you can just fill the form there. And, uh, yeah, ch check out the descriptions, too. We usually have uh, some relevant links 
either to a world record replay or um, uh, re- or to the links to the channels of the people who had episodes on there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So please take a look there as and well, and uh, that'll be great. You mentioned the nickel replay, and there's something I just remembered. Mm-hmm. The nickel replay is actually a past score by the world record holder. It's not the world record anymore, but it's still a higher score than than my replay. I see, I see. It was, it was the world record back when Zarok uploaded his replay, but three days after Zarok's score, he got a better score. But it's still a great run to watch as well. It's a, it's a 52.2 million points run. Mm-hmm. So, it, right. so it's also really interesting to check it out. And I think that's that wraps it up. Yeah, it is. Okay, yep. So take care, everyone, and uh, until next time on SCG Weekly. And. Yeah. <laughs>